Hey everybody, Jazzy here. I'm back in Core Keeper with another electrical guide. Now today I want to show you how to build every simple logic gate in the game. Logic gates are some of the most basic building blocks in electrical circuits, and the more you know about how electricity behaves in the game, the better you'll understand how to set up a circuit to do what you want it to do. There's currently not a ton of things to do with electricity besides powering drills, cranes, lights, and doors, but this system will very likely be expanded soon, so while we're in early access, we might as well cover the basics. Now, a logic gate outputs a signal based on the conditions of its input. Depending on the type of gate, the conditions of the output will vary. At the basic level, you have what's called an OR gate. Now this gate will output a signal if any of its inputs are turned on. Now if you do a Google search, you'll find this monstrosity of an OR gate on all the video game blog sites, but an OR gate is actually much simpler to build. Alright, so check this out. We got a power source right here, right? We're gonna put two levers down to the side of it. Those will represent the two inputs of this gate. Now we're gonna run some wire up and out, and guess what? We're gonna combine them, and then we're gonna send the output. That's it. That's as simple as an OR gate needs to be. And now if you hit one of the switches, turns on. Hit the other switch, turns on. Both of them, turns on. There you go, that's an OR gate. No complicated circuitry required. Okay, the next circuit we're gonna build is an AND gate. Now an AND gate will output a signal if both of its inputs are turned on. And to make this, we're gonna use a logic circuit. Now this logic circuit is an interesting little device. It takes three inputs, up to three inputs, and it sends an output if two of the inputs are turned on. So if we connect two inputs to these two levers and go straight into the logic circuit, it basically becomes an AND gate. Only sends output if both of the inputs it's receiving are turned on. So there's your AND gate. Okay, for the next gate, I gotta show you another electrical component. This is called an electricity stick. Ironically, it does not output any electricity. All it does is change the behavior of these uh, logic gates. So if you set an electricity stick next to one of the inputs, then that input will always be recognized as turned on. You'll notice the output of this gate stopped sending because it's now receiving inputs from all three sides. So, you can use this essentially to turn a logic gate into an XOR gate. An XOR gate will only send output if one of the inputs is turned on. So you see right here, one of the, this one's turned on, this one's turned off, signal outputs. If we switch them, if both of them are turned on, no signal. Switch them, one signal, and if we turn both of them off, no signal. So this logic gate is really kind of a Swiss army knife in terms of setting up logic circuits. You can use it for pretty much any simple logic gate. All right, the next gate I'm gonna show you is called a NOT gate. Now this gate only takes one input and it basically inverts whatever the input signal is. So if the input's turned on, output's turned off. Input's turned off, output's turned on. So there's a really easy way to set this up. All you gotta do is put a logic gate down here, put a generator to one side and an electricity stick to the other side. So now you can see the input's turned off, output's on, input's on, output's off. If you're trying to save on resources, you can usually reuse the signal from your first generator and just send it all the way to the, uh, to the top gate. The thing is with larger electrical systems, you might be left with kind of a weak electrical signal coming out the top of this logic gate, so is in, just in order to ensure that you get a full signal coming out of a NOT gate, uh, I prefer to use an extra generator right there. And it'll also be useful for repeating signals, which I hope to cover in a future video. Okay, these final three logic gates are actually going to be compound gates, so they're going to use multiple gates chained together to create some uh, unique behavior. So the first of these is called a NAND gate, which is short for NOT AND, which will output a signal as long as uh, there are fewer than two inputs turned on. Now this is basically an inverse of an AND gate, which means we can start with an AND gate and then run it through a NOT gate to invert the signal. So here's the AND gate down here, and we're gonna set up the NOT gate up here with a generator and an electricity stick. So now, as long as long as both of these sticks are not turned to the right, then we will get a signal. Yep, there's your NAND gate. All right, the next one is a NOR gate. 
Now this will output a signal only when both of the inputs are turned off. This is basically just an inverted OR gate. So we're going to build an OR gate right here, just combine the two signals, and then we're going to run it through a NOT gate up here. So we see both the signals are turned off, output sending. If we turn one of them on, everything turns off. So there's your NOR gate. Okay, this final one is probably the most complicated, and this is called an XNOR gate, which is short for exclusively not OR. So this gate will output a signal only when both inputs are in the same state, which means if both of these are turned off, or both of these are turned on, we'll get a signal output. This is actually an inverted XOR gate, so we can start by building an XOR gate down here, and then we'll run it through a NOT gate up here. Let's see if I got that right. Okay, both switches in the same state, change one, turns off, change both. When they're both turned off, then signal outputs. Yep, there is an XNOR gate right there. But yeah, that's it for the basic logic gates. I realize this is probably not the most practical information to have right now, but like I said, once we get more stuff to do with this circuitry, you know, different types of input, different ways of sending power, then these logic gates are going to be a lot more important in setting up circuits that perform more complex tasks. And in any case, it gives me an opportunity to nerd out right now on circuits. I love electricity. Well, let me know if you have any questions about these circuits, and fingers crossed we get pressure plates in the game soon. See you next time.